Welcome back and thank you very much for keeping it here at KUTV. Remember, you're still watching Elimu Nigobu and today we are celebrating or talking about systems that have worked and have actually countered the ongoing student unrest. Do remember to keep talking to us on our SMS number which doubles up as our WhatsApp number that is 0792 766 and 706. It's on your sc uh, screens as well. Interact with us. We'd like to hear what you think on our Facebook fan pages that is Elimu Nigobu and our Twitter handle that is Elimu Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have you enjoyed your break? Yes. Good. Now, we want to begin with the students um, as, as we come to you, teachers. Um, let's hear uh, what they think about what other students are doing in other places and what do you think went wrong. All right. Thank you for giving me a chance to be in this show. Mm -hmm. My name is Primal Murji. I'm from Cardinal Morris Atunga, I'm in Form 3, and my best subject is physics. Mm -hmm. What would you like to be when you grow up? Uh, in my head, I have many things to do, but uh, I, have, I have a dream of being a pilot. Of being a pilot? Yeah. Welcome to the world of flying, though we fly <laughs> mentally. <laughs> According to me, the, uh, the pressure that they get from their parents and um, some, sub some homework that they're given, like... Uh, I watched a movie t uh, like uh, two weeks ago, and uh, the parents, <coughs> they give uh, pressure on the students that when you grow up, you must be an engineer or a pilot or those kind of careers. So the students themselves, they leave their dreams back, they try to fulfill their parents' dream, and uh, because of that, some commit suicide, some do what they do, like burning down schools. Mm -hmm. Also, there was a song that uh, it was presented that I, I also, I didn't touch my heart. It was saying that it is in our language. I, uh, it says that the f uh, father is the one who taught them to bribe people by saying, if you bring 99%, I'll give you a phone, a watch, things like that. If you don't, a punishment. So that's what they try to stop and uh, causing them to burn schools, mm -hmm. etc. Thank you for having me. I'm Christine Onjiko. Um, I'm in Form 4 in Cardinal Maurice Otunga. Um, my best subject is English. And I would say that what they have been speaking about, the pressure, is mainly not from school but also from home. You know, parents, life happens. And at times you don't attain the goals you want to attain in life. And what happens is you grow this desire you have kids and you instill this, in, instill this desire in your kids. So if you wanted to become a doctor and you ended up being a teacher, you tell your kid you have to become a doctor. This kid, all he thinks about is music, DJing, or fashion. You know, the times have changed. So, and they think, people have made it. They have people, like, in the music industry, we can say Saudi Soul have made it. They're thinking, how oh, am Okay, those have made it. Why should the I make it too? Mm -hmm. But then the pressure hinders them, and therefore they explode. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think there's this unrest in schools. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Christine. Somebody's trying to make you what you are not. Yeah. In short, well, well, we'll go to the lady in the middle, and then we'll come to the back. Is that so? My name is Maureen Mora. I'm in Form Four at Cardinal Maurice Otunga School. My favorite subject is mathematics and Kiswahili. Mm -hmm. Uh, on this issue of burning the schools, um, I think the pressure is on the exams, the, how they're going to face the exams. The system actually itself comes in. Because you know this system, you have to be like, I have to remember everything from Form 1, everything I've learned, no leaving any information behind. So this one becomes a problem because you have to keep all this in your mind. Revise maybe some things you don't like. When you read, you're like, oh, I'm tired. So it becomes much of pressure to mm -hmm. you. you. You don't have any passion for what you are forced to remember yeah. all the way from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Mora. I'm Stephen Awar from Dagoret High School. Since my colleague students have started with the topic of pressure, I would also want to add something on that. Uh, this pressure from parents, from our sponsors, from uh, the society actually. People expecting good grades from you. Then when you're there in school, you try revising for the exams. 
but when the exam starts, doing two, three papers, you see that, ah, I'm not going to make it in this one. This one has come so tough. So you, you, you start, you start uh, influencing others to do something so that you, you, you disrupt the examination so that the results are not out. Uh -huh. Or uh, you, you, you've not read for the exams well, then when you know that the exams in a week's time, you start planning for something so that, uh, so that you disrupt the examinations as well so that the results don't come out. Uh -huh. that to, so that to prevent that pressure which you could have gotten by uh, getting the poor results. Uh -huh. So this pressure has led them to give up. And now that they've given up, if I'm getting it right, they're spreading it across. I, I want to come to shame so that we can change the narrative a bit. Maybe, thank you very much for that. That was quite good. Uh, just pass the microphone to Shem. Shem, you are a candidate who has gone successfully through the system and you are an alumni of Cardinal Morris Otunga. I've heard that is, that is a name, Cardinal Morris Otunga. Um, what is it that worked for you? I believe these plights, why your plights as well? But then somehow you went successfully without turning against it. What worked for you in your, in your era? Uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me on the show. Uh, my name is Shembe Watan Mukalo. I was a student in Cardinal Morris Otunga from 2006 uh, to 2010. Currently I'm in uh, Moore University taking linguistics, media and communications. Congratulations. Something that I have a passion for. You are passionate about it. Uh, yes. No wonder he, was, he did not burn any school. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, allow me to comment on uh, the, the, the situation in the country. I think it's a cocktail of factors that is actually motivating uh, what we are seeing in the country. One is the structural problems with our education system. And as members of the panel have said, that our education system is exam oriented. And so you are told that for you to succeed, you have to pass examination. And so there's tremendous pressure on the students to succeed. And I think it's, it, it's telling that when the exams are approaching, that's when we are seeing um, buildings, uh, school buildings being raised to the ground, a wanton destruction of property. And so I think we need to re-examine uh, the education system. Let us not um, insist so much on students uh, passing examination. Coming to uh, what really worked uh, for me, and I think this has actually worked for Cardinal Morris Otunga, I think is uh, the policy of engagement that uh, the school administration uh, adopted such that you did not see walls between the students and uh, the, the administration. I want to go to Dagoretti High School, all the, all the way to the other end. Maybe let's just go to the other end. Dagoretti High School. I know that among other things, there is a beautiful initiative and project that you're currently involved in. Maybe tell us something briefly about uh, that project, because um, I believe we don't have so much time, and also tell us what else has worked for you. No, uh, Your name again. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, I'm Michael Matho from the Great High School. Now, uh, the initiative that you are speaking about, we call it the human tribe, which means we are all human beings. We should all be one, we should all be peaceful. We should not uh, discriminate the other or think negatively about the other person. So this human tribe initiative, when we started it, we started it at a time when these schools were starting to be burned. And as we communicated to people, as we preached peace amongst them, as we told them that we can preach peace amongst people, when we start here in school, we can spread it out there. We can change the world through peace, through friendship, through love. We can change the world. And that's what we've been trying to do. Mm -hmm. So as we spread this information, the mentality that people got was that why should we ban the school, yet we are peaceful people? Why should we uh, do something that does not go with what we have just been taught or what we are supporting? And so they came to an agreement or they changed that mentality in their mind that they should not ban the school. They should be able to uh, patch their way through life with what they have, not through other ways of releasing pressure that is out of 
what we should do. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you engage other learners in the project? You've been told it's a peace building initiative. Uh, we, it, we, we, we basically put it uh, to be among the youth and especially in schools because um, our learning institutions have been seen as the shapers of the society. They shape the students so that they mold the students. When you leave school, now you become a person of substance out there. So you're working through the youth uh, by ch actually changing the, their, their, their mindset. All you're doing is changing the, the perspective of someone, mm -hmm. changing the way someone sees life, the, the, the view of, 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 of this youth towards life, mm -hmm. so that they may have that uh, a positive, uh, 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 positive look on life. Mm -hmm. And that, like the teachers had said, there is something that can be done. For us, we decided to do that. We had a peace week in our school uh, at a time when uh, when we okay, uh, basically we had uh, initially we had uh, a date when students were saying that by 22nd of July there's something could happen in the school. So we thought, okay, let's put a peace week towards this 22nd and see the outcome. And we did our, uh, our peace week starting from Sunday to Friday, and we crowned it on Friday. 22nd was on Saturday, and nothing happened. Nothing happened. It nothing. worked. It, it worked actually in school. Uh, counted. Yes. Why don't we give a round of applause? That is wonderful, right? That's awesome. Thank you very much. I want to come back to Cardinal Maurice Otunga students who are currently in the school. And I just want one more before I come back to the to the pan uh, to the panel. What is it? that is working for you. You people are here, Shem might have gone, but then something must be happening that maybe was not happening in their time and has worked for you, okay? So it's going to take us on that. I saw her hand first, so maybe give her a chance. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for giving me this chance. My name is Sheila Anjiko. I'm in Form 4 in Cardinal Lotunga. And apart, first, apart from pressure that you have all mentioned, we are focusing more on blaming or picking points on the teachers and the parents, but you're not picking points on us. Because one thing that makes us fail and not succeed is that we don't believe in ourselves. So we opt to look for leakages and stuff. We want the easier way to get to the university. But then, if we accept ourselves, if we identify who we are as human beings, then we can be able to focus on the examination that is yet to come. And here in Cardinal, one thing that I love about this school, and I'm very angry, I have a burden in my heart that I'm leaving school, mm -hmm. is that they gave me a chance to revisit myself and find new things that I could do that I could not believe that I could do. And we see, we share life exhibitions, like from Father Caron, from Father Giussani. We live as they lived. Like they say, Father Caron said that expect Expect journeys in your life and not a miracle for your responsibilities. So if you're not going to take responsibility for who we are and for what we do, not asking the question, why are we doing it or what's the outcome after we've done what you've done, we're not going to move. We're just going to be stagnant, afraid of the exam that is yet to come. Beautiful. I think she deserves a clap. That was, that was very deep. No, thank you very much. Um, we still have students who have not told us anything. I'm hoping that this you will pick up. Um, do you have any questions or anything you would like to pass out to the stakeholders? They definitely are going to be watching, right? The teachers, the decision makers, the policy makers. Do you have any question for them or, and, or do you want them to change something? All right, that is what I want to hear right now. Can you give a chance to somebody who has not said something? Anything? All right, they, they, they will have their time. Um, We'll take from behind, and then I saw a hand here. Good. Then this, and then that, and then we'll come back to the panel. I'm told that our time is up, so maybe we should do this uh, okay, on our feet. Okay, so I'll be brief. Uh, I think the main problem that is there is that there's no communication between, let's say, the parents, teachers, and the students. If there was communication, then the student will be able to understand the pressure that the parent or teacher is going through and the parent and teacher will understand the pressure that the student is going through. Therefore, uh, those who have the power to change the education system should create a, a way through which communication can be created within the system that students can say what they, will, what they feel, what they would like, and they also the teachers can pitch their ideas to the students so that when the two understand each other and are 
common way is created such that they understand one another, then no one will feel the pressure on them or the other one. There are these academic days in our school. I would say that the academic days are very important because it enables the, this relationship between a parent, teacher and student to grow. Because there are habits that a child can do in school, as in the behaviors, and also at home, he has a very different behavior. So when a parent and a teacher come together, they are able to discuss the behavior of the child at school and at home, and at long last, they'll come at conclusion that we have to help, we have to help this child. Because maybe the child is like, my parent does not listen, listen to me at home, so maybe he'll go on taking drugs, will be, which will become an effect to him or her and decide to do something that it is out of his mind because it's not that he liked to do it, but, but it was under an influence. Under influence, and nobody mm -hmm. was listening to him. Yeah. Thank you very much, thank you. We'll take the last one here. My name is Anastasia Kathula. I mean, form four at Cardinal Lotunga. And for me, what I can say is that the system of Kenya of getting an academic, just getting that an A is the one that should be changed because every student wants to be successful. And the successful in our ideas right now is getting an A and forgetting who we are. So then, like, we will do anything possible to get that an A. We'll cheat in exams, we'll ban schools. Right now, the rule of Matiani. He's very strict. The, now children are very, very, very anxious and curious. We are not going to get the leakage exams. And so we need that A. Yeah, and we need that A. Mm -hmm. At home, the parents are complaining. <laughs> <laughs> the parents are, are complaining. Here, teachers want teachers the same. You must get an A. We forget who we are. So uh, what we do here in Cardinal, the principal, the principal, the teachers about not being zombie, zombies, we don't want to be followed like you're told, do this and supposed to, to be like this. We have the freedom to choose what is right. But now the, the freedom comes in when we, when we know freedom is not like you say, ah, the parents are not there, the teacher is not there, so we'll make noise or we'll do, any, we'll do anything. Here it's like, you know, this is wrong, the teacher is not there. So we are, we are, you say, should they read or should they just make noise? So we find that you end up reading because you have, you have been molded to know how to choose what is the right thing. Shem, I'm giving you only 20 seconds to tell those students who are still in school, all right? They have dreams outside, but then they don't know that what they're doing right now is not going to let them get to where you are. Just 20 seconds. Well, uh, what I'll tell them is they need, uh, first of all, to stop uh, what they, they are doing. I think the best way to deal with whatever issues they have is to engage, because it's through engagement and conversation that a solution is going to be found. Mm -hmm. There's no solution that is going to come out of um, burning schools and uh, going on rampage. And as I've said that, I'd like to ask uh, the teachers since they are here, what concerns do they have about uh, the education system and do they think that the government is doing enough uh, to, address, to address whatever concerns that they have. Thank you. Thank you very much. As that microphone comes back to our teachers, please, let's give ourselves a round of applause. That was a wonderful. <laughs> you are definitely more knowledgeable and more resourceful than they think. They should hear you and know that you're not zombies at all, okay? You, you need to be hard because you know what you're looking for and you know what, what you want. Listening to your students, uh, teachers, you definitely have a question to address and definitely as you've heard, we've been told you only have three minutes to go, but listening to them, what, what are you doing now that there's so many gaps to be, to be filled? And maybe just final words as, as we wind up. The question is, what are the needs? Do we have in mind, for example, in schools, does the government have in mind all the policies, do they have in mind who is a person? What are the needs of a human person? Because deep inside each one of us, there are some things that are very basic. We want to be treated fairly. We want to, we want the truth. We want to be loved. These are basic things that doesn't require anything. These are the things that we should have in mind even as we form very good systems. Are we conscious? Because this is an existential problem. Because if we don't address this, after some time, it should still explode. Because the question of a human person is they're always looking for this. They'll always, if you treat someone unfairly, after some time, they will respond. So the question is, 
if we really have in mind the existential questions of the students. Mm -hmm. These are the things that we need to keep in mind. And in this school, we really try to answer this. This is why, for example, we take care of the school. The, the other day you mentioned that it's a beautiful school. Mm -hmm. It's not by coincidence. It is really a response to the fact that what does a human heart search for? What is it? What does it recognize? Mm -hmm. Anyone that comes here, it doesn't matter which religion or background, if something is beautiful, it's beautiful. And they feel comfortable. They feel comfortable. So the thing is, mm -hmm. the, the things that are human, the things that are completely universal, fundamental for the human person, these are things we should give value. For example, the truth. If we're serious about the exams, then no. There are things that the system has to improve. For example, there's something like, I always see, there are two different types of people in this country. There's one that needs to work very hard in order to go to the university. There's one that has to work minimally, so long as they can afford. Mm -hmm. and, and all these people, we need to take care of them. Thank you, Katisha. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Mr. Wafula, yes. we are finishing, uh, finishing up. There is uh, the initiative that has been uh, uh, you know, fronted by the students. Yes. And again, you've had their concerns. Your final take as we, as we finish up. The issues that we are seeing, the burning and all that, is a sad state of affair. But there is a, it, 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 it doesn't mean that we cannot solve. And one way is, uh, the kind of initiative that uh, I can attest to as, as a teacher in Dagoretti High School. We are not saying that Dagoretti High School has, a, has been a perfect school. We, we actually had the fires last year. So it's, it's every other experience, has, has every other opportunity has given us something to learn. So I, I believe that uh, we have these issues where probably as uh, the students have talked about pressures and all that, there are these initiatives probably that even the government comes up with. And you know, these are somebody sits somewhere, thinks about something, writes up something, and then takes it to a school for it to be adopted by, by the students. It's like you know, you're imposing an idea on. But these are, we, we need to encourage an, an, an initiative that is driven by the students. For example, the human tribe. Actually, they came up with an idea, and they consulted as teachers, and we fully backed the idea. And indeed, it has worked uh, for the school. Because during the time, the, 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 every media house was showing that, uh, you know, which school has banned which school. And you see, even these students, as much as they're in school, they also get information. They know that out there, people are burning or schools are burning. But we replaced that, you know, that tradition that has been there, you know, that every other July. And you will wonder, because it's a tradition that is there, that every other July season, schools will always be burning. You know, like, take next year, for example, come July, at least two or three schools. We, so it's a tradition that even it exists among the students. But it's a high time, as the great high school, we said, we must stand up and break that tradition. And the human tribe brought in the, the Human Tribe Peace Initiative brought in the Peace Week that we celebrated in school. During that time when schools, other schools were burning out there as we were celebrating Peace Week, we are going around talking to other students about peaceful coexistence and even to teachers. So as, as I wind up, I believe that the, 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 the youth at this level, this is a time that young people make career choices. My friend here has just talked about he wants to be a pilot. Mm -hmm. And you know, he's going to work towards it. The lady here wants, probably wants to be an engineer, wants to, whatever, whatever career that she wants to do, she can decide it at the time of high school. So even the young people can decide that we want peace. We want a future of peace. And I want just to, to, to emphasize, there's this, shang, there's this song that, uh, you know, there's this guy who sings and says, Bila Yesu, life ningori. Mm -hmm. I think in Sheng, <laughs> I can also tell them, Bila peace, future it ngori. Mm. So they have to choose the peace because when you grow up as an as, as an a pilot, as an entrepreneur, you want to thrive in a peaceful environment. So young people have an opportunity to choose a future of peace and progress. And as 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 adults, as teachers, as government, as parents, we must uh, support them. I have to thank my mother because there's one thing that she has always told me. I, I don't want to see the position you are in. I only need the marks. I'm concentrated on your grades and marks. I don't care about the position. So I'd like to tell the parents outside over there that don't pressure your, stu your kids to get an A or a B, just, or a position to be number one, two, three of the class. Just let them do the way they're doing and just help them get the education well. 
Once again, let us appreciate ourselves for the wonderful work we've done this evening with a round of applause. Okay. Thank you very much for keeping it here on Elimu Ninguvu. As you have heard for yourselves, our learners are not left out of decision making, especially when it comes to their future. They're looking to be hard and they're looking for someone who is going to realize that a lot has changed and someone who is going to see the need to embrace this change, embrace their talents, their natural abilities and want from them more than just passing examinations, but an expression of what they are that has been molded and nurtured and ready to exploit change the society. This is the 21st century with 21st century learners. Thank you very much once again. You have been watching us from KUTV. Remember once again to give us your feedback on our social media platforms. That is our Facebook fan page, Elimu Ninguvu. And you can also tweet us if you love to tweet on our Twitter handle. That is Elimu underscore Nguvu. We love to hear from you on our WhatsApp pages. You can send pictures as well. That is 0792-766-706. You can tell us also what you think on the same topic on the same number using a text message you can reach cardinal morris or tunga on the same number and you can also reach them uh Dagoretti high school on the same number it has been a wonderful experience Dagoretti high school please wave a good night to the audience <laughs> cardinal morris or tunga tell them good night <laughs> Well, thank you very much for choosing KUTV and choosing Elimu Nguvu. We are going to catch up with you next Monday, the same time, the same place. But in the meantime, keep it here at KUTV for the upcoming bulletin and for other news and other programs. Thank you very much. My name is Corazon Safan. Do have yourself a wonderful night. <laughs>